Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, October 18th, 2020, which is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. We hope you are staying safe and healthy at home and enjoying this beautiful fall weather. And uh, we're glad that you're tuning in this morning. In the meantime, let's frame our hearts and minds before God as we prepare to worship this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting in Christ's great promise of forgiveness, let us turn our hearts toward God in a moment of humble confession. Eternal God, our Creator, you are our breath and our very life. We are the work of your hands, the children of your creation. We confess that we have often turned from you and sought our own path through life. Forgive us our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, that you may be our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who is so rich in mercy, loved us even while we were still far away and has given us new life through our Lord Jesus Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God now forgives you all your sins. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of every blessing, your generous goodness comes to us anew every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to renew our faith in you and guide us to be faithful stewards of all that you have given us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel lesson, it's a fascinating moment because what you may not realize is that there are two groups here, the Pharisees and the Herodians, who are usually at war with each other. And here they are um, finding a common enemy in Jesus because the text says the Pharisees sent their own disciples and the Herodians to talk to Jesus. See, the Pharisees, okay, they wanted a pure and completely independent Israel. And they obviously were constantly speaking against paying taxes to Rome. On the other hand, this, these Herodians, um, they were Jews who, by their name, you could probably um, figure out, they supported Herod. So they were in favor of Israel's assimilation into the Roman world. So here you had complete opposite sides of the coin, these two groups. And yet somehow on this day, they both decided they hated Jesus even more. These two groups never would have spoken to each other um, civilly. And then here they are going together um, to, to try to trap Jesus. Because look, hey, they didn't want Jesus to live in either one of their worlds. So they get together and try to put him in his no-win situation. So they ask this question, 
And if Jesus answers, no, it's not lawful to pay taxes, then he's guilty of treason against Rome, and the Herodians will prosecute him in the civil court. But on the other hand, if Jesus should say, oh yeah, you should pay taxes, um, he's guilty of treason against God, and the Pharisees can then prosecute him in religious court. So it's, it's like they've, they've flipped a coin, you know? And either way, Jesus' popularity is about to take a big hit in their minds. So it looks, really looks like they've got Jesus caught in this moment between two worlds. But is he? Well, maybe the more of the question is, are we? Are we ever caught between two worlds? You know, trying to figure out if you're supposed to sell all your possessions in order to go to heaven, or whether your success is a sign of God's favor. Um, I don't know. Are you living between two worlds, wondering who you trust at the end of the day, uh, whether, you know, God or the empirical data of your food, your shelter, your clothing, and your protection, <laughs> or now uh, masks and, and vaccines? You know, and then just when you think you have it figured out, you remember that old saying that comes in the back of your mind that you heard all your life that money is the root of all evil. And that puts you smack in the middle of today's gospel moment, waiting while these two rival groups press in and look on uh, while this coin flips in slow motion through the air and where Jesus, and by extension you, have to pick a side. And there it is. The coin hits the floor, and Jesus hasn't helped us at all, because he says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. But wait, which is which? The Pharisees, you see, just like us, and like everybody else, the Pharisees, they have government currency right in their hip pockets. Because you know the temple coins that they use, the temple money that they use, that's holy and religious money? Well, that money is bought with government currency. Roofs are replaced with real money. Parking lots are with, paved with real money. The church is a business. And yet it's supposed to be just a mission. So Jesus hasn't defined anything. Or has he? See, for Jesus, this Herodian and Pharisaical coin that they have flipped has landed squarely on its edge because he says, you know what? We have to live in both worlds. He's saying Israel didn't have to lose its core identity just because they obeyed Roman laws. They didn't have to lose everything just because they obeyed those laws. They could live in Rome, but they didn't have to be Rome right? And Jesus' response solved the problem for both sides. But, you know, both groups obviously stay mad because they continue their action against him later on. Because on the one hand, Jesus is suggesting a tolerant and even productive relationship with Rome. You know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Um, but the Pharisees were against it. On the other hand, Jesus is saying, look, Israel could still be independent in a very real theological and spiritual way. So in a way, Jesus was saying what both groups wanted to hear. But of course, what does that do? <laughs> that makes them enemies of each other all over again. <laughs> Life in this world is so complex. It's so dualistic. But you know what? It's not heads or tails. It's heads and tails. Give to Caesar, but live. For God. But, in, and that's not so easy either. How do you do that? And, and who is it and how is it that creates a definition of what is the world's and what is God's? I don't know. Remember that thing about um, money and the root of all evil? Well, maybe this will help. If you remember, the, the real line is... Um, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil things. See, the love of money, um, the drive of money, the obsession with money, the worship of money, the, the love, the infatuation, the dedication to money. That's the root of all kinds of evil. 
um, because being driven by this makes you forget about everybody else sometimes. So I don't know, maybe that helps. But as soon as Jesus opens his mouth to answer this coin flip financial tax question, Jesus turns the whole thing into something else. He turns it into something other than taxes, something other than money. Because really what he's talking about is the, the tension, the tension of following God while we're still in the world. The difficulty of categorizing anything into heads or tails, black or white, good or evil, government or God, right or wrong. Jesus turns the Pharisees and Herodians' legal and financial question into a question of intent. When Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's, he's asking the real question, which is, what is your intent with this coin? And so it is we live every day with one foot in each world, trying to figure out how to support one without selling out the other, trying to figure out how to live heads and tails. <laughs> the real challenge for this gospel today is really that Jesus is not defining for us which is God and which is Caesar's. He's simply telling us there are two worlds and they have to be carefully balanced. Remember when, when Satan was talking to Jesus in those 40 days in the wilderness? What was he trying to do? He was trying to blur all those lines, right? He was trying to change Jesus' intent, trying to tell Jesus that the God world didn't matter, that all that mattered was the temporal world. You know, trying to blur those lines. See, this question of intent that Jesus raises is really a question of stewardship. But it, it's not really what we give to God or even how much we give to God. Really, as you're filling out your pledge cards, the question is why we give to God. To God who operates in a kingdom that's all around us, a kingdom that actually includes all earthly kingdoms, which incorporates all Caesars, both good and bad, even though they may not want to hear that. Why we give to God who operates in our world and in our heart. Why we give to God who hopes that we give whatever we do give for the right reasons. And that is that we use whatever resources we have for God's glory and not for ours. Because, you know, while the world may count our coins, God only counts our blessings. So what exactly is it that belongs to God? Well, your heart. More importantly, your soul. All the rest is just spare change. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you know what we can give to God right now? Something invaluable. The words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, with confidence in God's grace and mercy, let's take a moment to pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in any kind of need. <clears throat> Gracious God, you call us by name, and you invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among all of us and guide us in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place, 
Restore divided nations and communities with the truth of reconciling love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, doubt, or fear. Especially this day, we lift up to you Kathleen Worth, Joseph Camacho, George Zanikos, and all those whose names we lift up before you now, either silently or aloud. Join all their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call each of them by name as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you truly show in our no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. Especially today, we offer prayers of sympathy and concern to the family and friends of Bruce Cookingham, friend of Deacon Rich and Carol Farolito, of Jake Christian Moyer, son of Haley Moyer, of Gerald Honkin, father of Sandy Sherwood. We give thanks for their witness, and we're confident of your rescuing love and welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we call upon you, O God, and enfold into your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God be with you always. Take a moment to share the peace with whoever's in your vicinity right now. Or, you know what? Make a call. Send a text. Let somebody know that God is calling them by name today. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now one more prayer before we go. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer all darkness, and you sent the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth this day with the healing power of the gift of our very life, that we may serve you more fully by loving our neighbors more deeply through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you either in church or on video next week. Oh.